just for me. Make me who I'm meant to be. You're all I want, all I need. You're song did. We're so thankful for the Kriegers and Lynn Wonderland for providing breakfast this morning. So we're so glad to gather around those tables and share that time together. So we hope you'll stay and partake in that. But glad to have you here. Glad to have you in worship. And for this time together, the sun is shining and we give God thanks and praise. So let's, uh, let's keep worship moving and we'll join in another song. I will lift my hands and open my heart to receive your gift of praise. I stand here naked again. I'm so ashamed. I can do 
receiving today? How, how are you opening yourself up to that lightness of heart? Um, maybe you're carrying burdens right now. You're carrying something that's heavy, and God says, just hand it over. I want to take it. I want to lift that for you. I want to give you that lightness of heart to receive that grace. And so I just invite you, um, maybe even have a posture like this, as we pray. Lord, thank you that your gift of grace falls upon us abundantly, that we have but to receive it. For the burdens that we carry, for the ways that our shoulders are stooped down, we ask that you lighten those burdens, that you help us to carry them, that you are with us through them. And for that joy of spirit that is possible with you, help us to see that and open ourselves to that. This morning as we worship, may we feel you. May we carry your spirit with us out into our day. That others might see it and recognize you in who we are and how we portray you. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So glad to have you here this morning, and I believe Miss Jessica is ready for a children's time, so come on up. Good morning. Hope oh, we're bringing a friend with. Who's that? Very sweet. 
So, what do you think the most expensive thing in the world is? A house, yeah. A house, sometimes cars, yeah. What if someone gave you a bunch of money? What would you buy? You put it to college? Half in college, half in future house. That's very smart. A house? Cool. Would you say oil like this over here would be very expensive? No. No, not typically. Not the, su that, not the kind we see. So today's story, you might recognize this one. There's a woman who has very expensive oil, and she washes Jesus' feet with it. And it was usually of oil that used for people that were getting buried. And so she poured it on his feet, wiped it up with his hair, because she knew who Jesus was. Not a lot of people did at that time. And Judas kind of criticized her, said, why would you waste such an important oil on his feet? And Jesus reminded everybody in the room that he was worth more than anything expensive. Would you say the same? Yeah, me too. So what do you, so of all the fancy things in the world, Jesus is number one, isn't he? How do we show him that we, do, we know that? We pray, we read the Bible, would you say sometimes when you have actions that are um, portrayed to you, you choose what would Jesus do rather than what you want to do all the time? Yeah, very good, very good. Should we pray? Awesome. Everybody can repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, You are worth more than all riches. You are worth more than all riches. Help us to remember that. Help us to remember that. And to always put you first in our lives to always put you first in our lives. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your son, Jesus. In his name we pray. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. We're going to talk a little bit about the sense of smell today. When you came in the building, what was the first thing you smelled? It's meat cooking, right? <laughs> I don't know. Was it bacon or sausage or both? Sausage. Awesome. Well, I, like, I thought it was bacon. So anyway, it's all good. <laughs> I per yeah. Anyway, we can have the bacon sausage debate some other time. But we have this amazing sense of smell that is so closely connected to memory, right? When you smell certain smells, it can take you instantly back to a time or a place or a person even. If I smell things like apples and cinnamon baking, I'm in my grandmother's kitchen instantly because she always got up at 4 in the morning to make the apple pie. I don't know why. I was always up with her, so anyway. And then there's the other, the other sense, the other side of the sense of smell. Um, sometimes when I pass like a really foul smelling dumpster, I'm instantly taken back to the camp that I went to every summer where you had to pass the dumpster to get into the cafeteria. Not good placement. Not good. I did not eat much in that cafeteria. So those, that sense of smell is so tied to memory. So what are some smell memories that you have? Shout them out. Bread baking. Bread baking takes you back to childhood, right? Coffee brewing. Yes, right? That Folgers commercial did not lie. Oh, fresh. Oh, I can't. I'm longing to smell that right now. Oh, the lilacs blooming. All kinds of lilacs in that childhood home. Awesome. Repellent. Mosquito repellent. What does that take you back to? <laughs> Camping. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Manure. Yeah. Smell like smell of childhood right there on the farm. That's the smell of money, according to a lot of people, right? 
So that sense of smell, it, it literally is um, our sense of smell and our memory and emotion center is, all, is very closely linked in our limbic system in the brain. So when we smell those things, we can be instantly taken back to those times and places. Faces can come up for us as we smell sausage cooking as we come in. Smell is this powerful thing. It can give us wonderful smells, flowers, cut grass. It can give us not so wonderful smells like manure, the landfill down the road, sweaty gym socks, all of that stuff. In Jesus' day, the smell of death was a real thing. And not just like decaying bodies, like I don't want to get gross, but it's not just that, but as they prepared a body for burial, there was a smell. There was a particular smell. And so our gospel this morning draws us into that sense of how smell can be connected to, our, our, to life, to how we experience life. So this is as we approach Holy Week and Jesus' own death, we're getting closer to that moment, and hence the stories kind of tie us into where he's headed. So we are in the Gospel of John this week. I know we've been in Luke, but John draws this story out in a different way. So I wanted to bring his version to us this morning. This is John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She brought it and bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I don't, I don't think you can smell it, but I had this diffuser going on up here. Does anybody use an essential oil diffuser? Like there are different scents that um, can help with different things. So I had tea tree and peppermint this morning. So if you feel cleansed and refreshed, thank the diffuser. This sense of, of smell um, healing us is an amazing, amazing thing. And I feel like what happens when Mary opens this jar of perfumed oil or perfumed kind of um, ointment, this stuff called nard, like she opens the jar and instantly it fills the house. It is this smell that cannot be mistaken. And as I, as I said, there is this smell of death in Jesus' day, and it is this scent of nard, because that's what was used to prepare a body as it was dying for burial, all of those things. And so as she opens this, instantly everybody would have looked around and said, what, what's happening? Who's, who's dying? Now, again, I said I wanted to read John's gospel in particular. This story is in all four gospels, different times and people there. But John's version is particularly, I think, poignant because Lazarus is there. Not even a week before this happens, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. So as he is in the room, the stench of death is almost still there. As they smell this nard, they're looking around going, oh, right, that must be Lazarus. Poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's interesting to, to kind of note why John brings that up. 
Now, I, we should say something about this thing called nard. Does anybody, I don't think it's on the shelves at Metro Market, right? I, it's, it, it is very expensive because it's made of this flowering plant that only grows in the Himalayas. So it would have been really expensive, but it is this ointment, oil, perfumed oil almost, that they would use for anointing a body for burial. I have a perfume version of it here if you wanna smell it after worship. It's, it comes from the honeysuckle plant, so it is rather, it's like a sweet smelling thing. It's not unpleasant, but the minute she opened that, they would have known what it was for. Let's say something about this expense. So Judas comments about the expense of this. 300 denarii is what they probably could have made for this pound of nard. Now a denarius was a daily wage. So you worked for a day, you would get a denarius. So this is almost a year's worth of wages that Mary spends on this nard. A year's worth of wages. When was the last time you spent almost a year of wages on something that you slathered on somebody's feet? I mean, I think had I been there, I might have said something along the lines of Judas. Like, couldn't we have found a better way to use almost a year's worth of money? If you knew someone who did this, you probably would have had the same questions. When was the last time you did something really costly out of love, out of joy, out of exuberance? When was the last time I sacrificially showed my love for God? That's what Mary wants to draw us into. This, this exuberance, this I can't hold it back sense of joy when Jesus is in the room, when Jesus is in her presence. Now, other versions of this story don't necessarily name Mary of Bethany. They just say it's a woman who has been forgiven much. And so out of thankfulness, she offers this washing of Jesus' feet and wiping it with her hair. Judas, on the other hand, I'm wondering about his sense of thankfulness, about how he might show love for Jesus. We know what the next two weeks brings for him. Mary sees life in the midst of death. I think Judas only sees death. I think Judas only can see what is right in front of him. He can't see beyond that. How are we finding life in the midst of death, in the midst of hardship, in the midst of the burdens that we carry? I feel like this sense of Judas holding back and his stinginess in me more often than I would care to admit. How does our own stinginess keep us from living fully with and for God and seeing the extravagance of love that's possible? As always, Jesus kind of brings us back to home base and says, you know, don't bother her. Don't, don't concern yourself with her extravagance. She knows what time it is. She knows that I will not be here much longer. He realizes that his time is drawing near. He knows that the stench of his own death is impending. And so the timing is right for Mary to anoint out of thankfulness and get him ready for that moment. This isn't, it may sound rather dismissive, like you'll always have the poor with you, but it is really a situational comment. He knows the moment is right. 
But of course, he's not dismissing the poor, but recognizing that his time to leave them is coming. And Mary understands this timing better, I think, than Judas, perhaps because she has just personally witnessed death and that this is the one, this Jesus is the one that can overcome death, that she has that personal experience with death, tells her, yes, this is the time to show others what it means to anoint this one who can overcome death and get him ready for his own. She knew to relinquish her most prized possession and lavish it on Jesus. I think the heart of this story is this rather simple yet difficult thing. How are we unashamedly, publicly, joyfully throwing all that we have at Jesus' feet? Showing our love for Jesus. How do we offer our best out of gratitude and joy? we regularly lay down those burdens that we started worship laying those burdens down how are we putting those at Jesus's feet because whatever we offer we pour out completely people will notice and Jesus will honor this lavish pouring out of this oil the beauty of Mary's gift in this moment is recognizing Jesus' impending death. But I think the smell of this extravagant oil will stick with those people and hopefully with us in a way that says it's not just about death any longer. It is about how death is overcome. For Lazarus, for Mary, for even Judas, for Jesus himself, and even for you. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, there are so many ways that you call us to be reminded of life in the midst of struggle, in the midst of death, in the midst of burden. Help us to remember that your gift of life started with you, with your coming, your birth and death and resurrection, that you are making all things new and help us to perceive it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand as we're able and join together in singing.
best things about worshiping together is we can lay them down, but also uh, with each other and share that, um, share that time together. So I hope you find that in your brothers and sisters here. And the, one, of the, one of the ways we carry each other's burdens is that we share that peace of Christ. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Thank you. Won't you share that with one another? Peace this morning. Peace, peace. Peace. <laughs> and peace to those on Facebook. Thank you for being here. We hope you have a, a wonderful day. Share that peace in the comments. And any prayers that you might have, uh, don't forget to share those as well. We're so thankful to have you all here this morning. As you're done sharing that peace, you can have a seat. We're very excited to uh, have some new community partners join with us this morning. Um, as, as kind of we come out of, out of COVID and, and figure out what post-pandemic life looks like, uh, we hope there'll be more and more folks that want to join us. So um, we do, I just want to say a bit about why we call them community partners. You are all community partners. We're not members in a country club where we pay our dues. Uh, this, is, this is a partnership that we partner with God but we also partner with each other. So we're excited to welcome some new community partners this morning. I'll have them come on up because I want you to see their faces and uh, share, their, share their names with you. Come on, come on. I know you're out there. Yay. Come on up. All right, we got to get the kiddos. Ruth, Ruth was like, no. He's too busy. <laughs> That's awesome. Awesome. Well, we're so glad to have you guys here. Some of these faces you probably already know, um, but I'm going to have them do a quick introduction and just uh, share name and kind of where you live and uh, whatever else you want to share. That's dangerous, giving this to Jean. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Jean Hoover, and this is my wife, Vicki. Where we live right now, our spirit is in this church amongst you guys. We have found home, and it's been a very long journey. Thank you, guys. I know for me, from the minute that I walked in, I felt welcomed. I didn't feel judged. And I have never met so many people that just shows true love. It's, it's, uh, it's changed our lives. It really has. My name is Rana Trapanese, and I live in McFarland. Um, this place feels like a pair of slippers. That's all I can say. It feels like, feels like home. It's really fun to sing with the band and and I go into the women's retreat, so I want to get to know the women of the congregation. So thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Bruce Miller. I play in the praise band, as you've probably noticed. Uh, I was just thinking the other day, it's been almost three years since I started here. It doesn't seem that long. It was May of 2019. Sandy put an ad on Craigslist looking for a bass player. So I answered the ad came and watched a rehearsal, and I think I was playing bass the next Sunday, so. And uh, for me, music is a very spiritual thing. It, it really connects me with God and uh, brings me a lot of joy, and if I can bring some joy to other people through my music, that's important. But we're both very happy and honored to be a part of the community now, so thank you. My name is Brooke Kriego, and this is? Phoenix. Ruth. And we've been kind of searching for a good place to land for a while, and we just all kind of felt like this was a nice place to be for now. So we would be happy to join and be partners with your church. So. Well, I am just obviously thrilled that God brought you here, that the Spirit moved and 
said, hey, this is a place for you, and we're glad to be partners with you. So I just ask that you will be faithful in prayer, especially in worship, in the ways that God calls you to live out this faithfulness, and uh, that if, if we can do that together, all the better. So let's pray. God, we're so thankful and blessed to have these people among us, that you have called them, that you have drawn them here. Draw out of them all the gifts that you have placed in them, that they might serve you, they might serve through this place and make us better. Thank you for this time to worship and acknowledge you and also to welcome them. Make us all faithful to serve you. In Jesus' name, amen. So I ask people of New Life, other community partners, will you welcome these new people and honor their gifts that they share? If so, answer, we will. We will. And will you serve diligently? Will you pray and continue to worship your God? If, if so, answer, we will. Let's, we're so glad to have you a part of us. Yes. Awesome. Thank you all so much for coming up and being vulnerable and, and you know, standing up in front of all these weird people. So. <laughs> So, and we hope you'll come and enjoy breakfast this morning, too, and so people can greet you. So, please stay for breakfast and, uh, and welcome them. Thank you guys so much. Now Ruth can get back to her craft, right? So, again, so glad you're all here. We hope you'll stay for, for breakfast to welcome our new community partners and just uh, share time with other folks that maybe you haven't seen in a while. So, uh, as Rana said, we want to encourage all women to think about joining us for the women's retreat. It's April 30th, that last Saturday in April. Uh, the deadline is April 15th, which is going to come sooner than you think. Uh, so uh, if you want to sign up, it's on the email. There's a link there that, to go and sign up. Um, it's going to be a wonderful conversation. A couple different congregations that are joining in uh, in this retreat. So uh, it'll be nice to meet different people from all around Madison as well. Lenten practices. Next week is Palm Sunday, believe it or not. Uh, so the labyrinth will only be set up in the community room for another couple of weeks. So uh, if you'd like to partake of that, hopefully it's going to be warm enough uh, soon that we can be outside at the labyrinth, but uh, I want to encourage you to take part of the uh, inside one if you want. And uh, remind you about the, the learning libraries, the lending libraries that are against the walls uh, available for you as well. Holy Week, uh, we hope you'll be a part of the whole story. Don't just go from, from you know, Hosanna to Alleluia, right? Don't just go from Palm Sunday to, to Easter. you you got to get the whole story. Uh, so Thursday night, Jesus gathered with his disciples around a table, and so that's what we will do as well. Uh, we're going to have worship around the tables in the community room on Monday, Thursday. Uh, so 6.30 worship, 5.30 free dinner. Thank you, Kathy Nelson, for that. Um, yes. And it's, I mean, it's going to be like ham and like, it's going to be like a meal, right? So anyway, nice. so 5.30 dinner, 6.30 worship, and then Good Friday, the story of the cross, the story of sorrow, um, the story of grief, and how we, how we all manage that, because um, we all do. Um, and so I want to invite you to come and have that moment with Jesus, uh, Friday at 6.30. And then on Easter Sunday, 8.15, a more traditional uh, Easter worship, 9.30 and 10.45 will be praise-led worship. Uh, the 9.30 will be live-streamed for that, for that Sunday as well. So a uh, great time to invite friends and neighbors that maybe don't have a church home. That would be a great time to do that. As we anticipate our uh, landscape project, we are going to do a spring cleanup. So on Saturday, uh, April 23rd, uh, around Earth Day, uh, we'll be gathering to kind of clean up some spaces. Uh, Joe and Queen are working on a list of projects for us to get ready for this landscape project. Uh, so if you have any questions about that, just see, see Joe or uh, come and talk to me. There's a way to sign up to be a part of that day as well. 
Again, so thankful to uh, share this time with you. Um, one of the most meaningful things I think we do as a community is that we pray for each other. So uh, let's spend some time in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, you are indeed making all things new. Make new the worldwide church so it continually preaches love and mercy to a world that sometimes only understands hate and retribution. Make us into a people who are so aware of your grace that it flows out of us constantly. Make this creation new, well-watered gardens, blooms bursting out of the ground and from buds in the trees, new birth happening all around us. Help us to see the signs of spring as your continual commitment to rebirth and resurrection hope. Make us an Easter people. Even in the midst of Lent and our path toward the cross, may we keep the cross in mind, but always in light of the empty tomb. Help us to be people who see new life where others only see death. Guide those who struggle this day, those dealing with depression or suicidal thoughts, those in pain, chronic illness, those managing grief, and any other strain, that they might find the help necessary to feel your spirit's presence. So we continue to pray for people and situations. We pray for Rayanna Bean and her healing, for Rich and Rose Skarsky, for Megan Hoffmaster as she heals, and for Megan and Scott as they welcome their new little baby girl home. We pray God's favor and guidance for Pablo. We continue to pray for Shirley Thiel and her health for Pat and her health. We pray for Margie and Tom. Lord, we continue to pray for the people of Ukraine that somehow your spirit would make a peaceful solution. Do a new thing within us, Lord, too. In this church, in this community, in our homes, in our hearts. Make all things new. Accept these prayers that we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need and for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. And as we gather around this community table, this small little meal, we invite you to be a part of it. You are a part of this family meal. We remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you come forward, know that all are welcome to receive this gift. I do have gluten-free wafers in the front. If you have that need, just let me know. Uh, but come as you are directed, for all are welcome. The meal is ready.
There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You are living home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. The sweetest of loves When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here Come fly with the gift of this blessing that is bestowed on us in this little piece of wafer and this little bit of juice. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthens you and keeps you in his grace. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's remain standing and join together in singing.